Hello everyone, it's Nikki Backer of the Angelo here for the Addicted Gamer, and today I'm going back to the roots of this channel. One of the first videos I ever did was about this beautiful game over here called Kerbal Space Program. And all I can tell you is that there have been some major changes to it. And let's look right down here in the lower right hand corner and you'll see version 1. Dot zero, dot zero, dot eight, three, zero. And in this case, unlike another game that I do Let's Plays and videos for, it means it's released. This game has gone live, and uh, it's actually got a lot of depth to it now, and many things that you can do to actually make the game uh, fun and engaging. So we're going to start a whole new game here. And uh, there's something brand new. There's a female Kerman, and we'll we'll show you that female Kerman as soon as we get in. So let's go and start a new, and we will call this one um, Girl Power, and you will understand that in just a few moments. Now pick a flag, and let's pick an appropriate flag. Oh, <laughs> trippy, and the appropriate flag for us is going to be hmm I like the trippy flag eh we'll go with it looks kinda like an old Leroy Neiman to me let's start it and let's talk about what's going on in the game now so you're being greeted as soon as you come in by Gene Kerman that's a throwback to uh, Gene Kranz who was the uh, mission coordinator or director over at the uh, Johnson Space Center in Houston for quite a long time. He would uh, do all the mission controls. Um, and right over here you're just going to hear him say, I'm the flight director, this is Kerbal Space, this is the Space Center. From here you can manage all aspects of the program. Read this if you want to, there's a lot of cool things. And uh, we'll just talk about each one of the building complexes here. Okay. We're going to start, and we're going to go from here. We're going to go back around and end up at the VAB. So this is your astronaut center, and in your astronaut center, you can hire Kerman, Kerbins. And you're going to notice Valentina Kerman is now in the game. And she is a pilot, just like Jeb, and shares exactly the same characteristics as him. So she's got the badass ability, which means that, well, she's just badass. But you'll notice that there's all different female Kermans throughout here and that's going to be pretty awesome. So let's go out of here. This is where you do your hiring of Kermans. Over here this is going to be the people that you pick to actually be the forefront of your game and different aspects or attributes that you pick over here will either bring you more uh, better missions or more money or better Kermans, whatever it might be. Or, of course, increase the science in your uh, science gathering inside of your game. This over here is the R&D area, and in R&D you unlock your different parts of your tech tree. Over here you have your tracking center. You can track all objects out in space floating around Kerbin and then floating around the solar system itself. So as you go out from here, depending on how uh, much you have this upgraded, you'll be able to see all sorts of objects flying out here. Right now we don't have the ability to see, uh, to see uh, meteors or asteroids. That will be something that will come in later. All right, as we go back, the next thing up is the launch pad. Currently, the launch pad is just, and we can actually go right in and take a walk over to it. The launch pad is just a sand pit, and that's something that needs to be upgraded over time. So we can only launch small rockets from here at this particular point, because anything bigger, there's not enough protection, and there's no gantry tower or anything else that you would need. So you need a place to actually get contracts and to make some money and get some reputation. And that's going to be over here. And this is Mission Control. We're going to take a couple of missions to start off with. And we just took those two. You can only take two at a time as you start. You need to upgrade this center 
to take more. This is the space plane hangar. Once we get space plane parts, this will be a place that we could actually make planes. Currently, we don't have any. That's not going to help us out right now, so we're going to jump out of here. And then we have the vehicle assembly building where we get to build our spacecraft. So let's go in here and try to build something where we could launch our first spacecraft and gather some science. So we start off with a pod, and you'll notice that the pods have a cost. 600 carbon dollars, or whatever they call it. And we'll actually just pop this right down, and it comes pre-installed with somebody. See? It's already got Jebediah in there. But Jeb, sorry, this is a woman's world, and Valentina is going to go first. Now, there aren't a lot of parts unlocked in the beginning. We have the fleet engine, which we'll put right down here. And then, of course, we need to have a parachute so we can land. Then we have some science gathering, which they give you right up in the beginning. And what we're going to do is we are going to put three of these on the ship. And the reason I'm doing three is to take some readings in the beginning, middle, and end of the journey. Okay? Right now she can't get out of the ship in space, which is alright because we can't go to space. We will talk about that a little bit later. So that looks good. We got our ship. So let's go run and uh, give it a name. Okay. We're going to call Girl Power 1. Warner. No, <laughs> 1. And we are going to save that. Next up, we're going to launch it. And, of course, loading times have been drastically reduced. And here we go. And because she's a pilot, we can actually turn on SAS. And we go. Oops, what happened there? Well, for all of your new pilots out there, let's take this back to the hangar and show you what I did wrong. A lot of people jump right in, build a rocket, and they never look down here to the right. And you'll notice that this is our staging, okay? You might not have known that before I'm talking about this. And in your staging, you got to make sure that it's staged right. So we're going to add a second stage here, which will be our first one. And we want to drag this down to the bottom. And the reason for that is they're going to stage from bottom to top. And we want the engine to fire first and then we want the parachute to go off second. The other piece of it is we just took off without taking valuable science data and that's something that we're going to do this time out. We want to make enough data in order to make some major unlocks later on. So we're going back out to here we are we're back at the launch pad. First thing that we want to happen here is we want to use this right here and that was a goo container we just gained science from that we want Eva to we want to EVA we want to take an EVA report this is a most precarious situation yeah they always have something funny to say and then we want to make her board again and I'm going to take a crew report here because I'm going to save the crew report for above ground for the next one Sounds funny, but you'll see what I mean. We're going to have to launch a couple of vessels to get enough science to start building bigger and badder ships. So here we are on the launch pad already. Valentina is going to turn on SAS because she's badass. And we are going to do a countdown. 10, 9, 4, 1, 0. We're going to point it over the sea a little bit. And the flea runs out of fuel really fast. Now this is an opportunity for Valentina to try to get another crew report. You're going to notice she can't. That's mainly because we already have one stored inside. And we do not have another way to uh, transmit yet crew reports which don't have any degradation in their report when you send it back and we'll talk about that in one of the next missions okay 
So we are now dropping. We're going to save this report. And we should be getting enough over the sea. We're going to turn this off. Put out our parachute and fall back safely to the planet. Now I'm going to do something. I'm going to start increasing warp just to make it go a little bit faster and use it the uh, right and left bracket keys that are just over the comma and the period. Now we can actually go back so you can see the uh, big giant parachute as it unfurls. And we are going to back off just a little bit because sometimes when you are uh, sometimes when you're in warp weird things happen when you have uh, staging events or opening parachutes landing in the water etc etc so here we go we're going to land in the water in just a few seconds and we're going to take a couple of more pieces of science when we do that Still settling down on and there we are. So at this particular point we have an opportunity to take a look at the mystery goo. And we're going to keep that. That's another four science. I'm going to turn back on SAS. We're going to roll the spacecraft over. Keep it in this orientation. We're going to get Miss Valentina to come out. And uh, she's going to roll into, uh, almost roll into the water. And we're going to have her do an EVA report again. She saves a little bit more science. And we're not going to get out this time. We might get out another time. And that's it. Now you move your cursor up over this uh, ancient looking uh, digital readout device. It's an analog actually. And you click on recover vessel. And when we do that, we're going to be getting a mission debriefing. The mission debriefing is going to give us how much, look, here we go, how much science. We have 31 science. That's enough to unlock a couple of the uh, tech tree items. We go next. We're going to get how much uh, funds we have now. We have 133,125 funds. And 1 XP was earned by Valentina. Not bad, Valentina. Good job. Up here, we have all of the uh, contracts that we completed. Speed record, 150 meters a second, 300 meters a second, 3,500 feet, 5,000 feet, and gather science data. All right, so we're going to go back here, and we are going to take another two. And there's going to be some that just come to us automatically that we get. Alright, so for this one what we want to do is because there is a small opportunity for us to actually get into space, we're going to right click on these guys over here. This is the astronaut complex. It's going to allow us to have five active Kerbin, you know, Kerbals, and Kerbals can only disembark on Kerbin. When I upgrade this, You now can have capacity 12 active Kerbals. Kerbals can perform EVAs, and Kerbals can EVA, on EVA, can plant flags. So we just gave ourselves a big boost just in case we escape the atmosphere, because we can now gain some uh, opportunity to get our uh, Kerbins out of the ship. Alright, so we still have the same parts. So we have to go and get out of the hangar here, out of the VAB. And we have to go into the R&D center, which is going to be down in this area when the uh, screen comes out. So here we are. We just unlocked a couple of items. So for five, we're going to unlock Science Junior, a Communitron, those are important, a Stack Decoupler, those are all important. We're going to unlock a bigger engine, which right now really doesn't matter because we are going to have it on this right here and we'll talk about that in just a few moments and a bigger solid fuel booster so we're going to research that the other piece that we're going to research we have opportunity to research heat shields which we probably won't need this time out and uh, service bay which we could put experiments experiments in which we probably won't need this time let's look at we have 
32 left. General rocketry, I want the bigger rockets. And that leaves us with 12. We need 15 for the next one. We're just going to go and build a rocket based on what we just got. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pull off the base here and move it aside. I'm then going to come over here to science, add a science junior to it. Okay. I'm going to leave this parachute here. I'm going to take this down. We already had two. And I'm going to move it to here. I'm going to... Uh, Let's see, we're going to put a stack to coupler in a second, but what I want to do... Hmm... What do I want to do? I want to do this. Then I want to have this fuel tank right here, which is a little bit bigger. I want to have this engine, which is gimbaled. I want to have this stack to coupler. And I want to have this right here. We're actually going to go farther. If you right click on the engine, you could actually go to thrust limiter and you might want to do that. This is pretty light for what it's going to be doing. I'm going to bring it down to about 80.5%. And then I am going to take Jebediah and put him in the seat because he wants to prove that men can do things too. Uh, we'll call it boy power. Boy power one. We are then going to look at our staging over here and I'll show you how it goes. So we highlight it, it will show us the part and it's actually a lot brighter of a highlight. Next part, that's the stack to coupler. That's the second engine. That's the stack to coupler and that's the parachute at the top which we can just highlight, that's fine. So we've got a bigger rocket to launch this time. And I don't know why I clicked out of there. We want to click launch. So we saved the rocket. Let's make sure we got the right person in it. Still Jebediah. And we're going. So this one's going to be a little bit different. There's going to be some staging involved with it. We're going to be going further and higher than we did before. Jebediah also being the badass pilot, we could turn on SAS. Bill and Bob do not have that ability at this point. They're more science and engineering. In, uh, um, well, they, they have science and engineering as their main attributes. So let's go and do our countdown. 10, 4, 1, take off. And you're going to see why as I turn this over just a little bit. Just a tiny bit of a gravity turn here. It's because it gains speed pretty quickly. You see that we're already going towards the speed of sound. And we have busted through it. You get rid of that piece. And bleed off some airspeed. And then fire our rocket engines. And we're going to observe the materials bay. We're going to keep it. We're going to observe our Cree report up here. Keep the data. And we are breaking all sorts of records and stuff over here. We're getting high into the atmosphere. We've gotten rid of the back end. If you notice, we were starting to tip over. It's mainly because we were becoming nose heavy. Weight and balance is an important part of this particular game these days. So we can go into the map button now and see just how high we're going to get. We're going to be on a very big suborbital tra trajectory, but we're only going to get to about 36 kilometers. Not really above the atmosphere, but high enough to take some other data. Let's see if we could take data again here. Probably not. We're not high and Yeah, we are. And that is from the upper atmosphere. So we are able to get nine more data. 
Now we can't take uh, Jebediah out on an EVA here because an EVA at this point would not work out to our advantage. Now there is an issue here where we're going to be a little bit higher than we needed to be so we might uh, hit a little bit of uh, wind resistance. We're at the top of our arc called the uh, apoapsis. We're going to start dropping now. If we took a heat shield, we'd be able to withstand re-entry. Now, this thing is going to speed up a lot. You notice that we're going 496, 400, 500 meters a second, and we're in the upper atmosphere. So we're now going to be coming into the thicker part of the atmosphere when we hit around 20K. And uh, if we go much faster than this, we might see a little bit of, uh, a little bit of uh, heating up of our exterior surfaces. And here we go, 27. We should start to see some uh, shock effects in a few seconds as we get closer and closer to the main atmosphere here. 665. Let's see if the effects start to come into play here. 680, 681, still not thick enough. You could see the atmosphere there we go we're heating up a little bit over here we're slowing down and we got the shock effect so we didn't heat up enough and aerodynamically this thing is unsound it's uh, like a bullet you see this so we can't turn it over at all um, this is going to be an issue for people that want to take their science back with them but there is a way around this later on now as we get below 300 and uh, get into our 200s we're going to launch our parachute the reason we want to do that is we don't want this needle to go up into the red so we're still coming down 270 260 up oh, we just could have killed Jebediah that is something they don't have modeled right now which is Z G forces and he just took about 12 G's it is possible to take that pass out and live but uh, probable that some people would have some massive damage to their body if that was the case. Because we weren't able to keep the flat portion of the spacecraft in the uh, airstream or going forward, we weren't able to slow down as much. There are drogue chutes later on that will slow you down a lot slow, you know, a lot easier than this. But that's not a, sh a shoot that we had this time. So we've gathered enough science on our two first journeys to uh, get us some extra parts. So let's get this down to the ocean right now and Jeb is going to actually do something that another astronaut in history did. He's going to screw the pooch. He's gonna get out of the capsule when he shouldn't. So we're gonna have him EV EVA and come off and go into the water. Reasoning here we want an EVA report from the water. And uh, spacesuit wasn't necessary here is something he said. Now we're going to see if he can get on. He can. Um, let's go around and up on the nose again. This becomes a futile issue at times and there's a way around this you can actually pick up both things separately and I'll show you how that happens so at this point we can't get him back in the craft so we're going to recover the vessel which in this case is just Jebediah now Jeb is going to have some science on him now which is going to be about the five or six that he had yeah 16 science is what he had we're going to click next. He gained 1 XP, just like Valentina did. But we don't have that craft back. How are we going to get it back? Well, you're going to click over here on the tracking station. And then you're going to see over here, Boy Power 1. There it is. That's Boy Power 1. And we're going to click Recovery down here. We're going to recover it. And there is our other 30.1 science. I'm going to click next. 
We now have 249,985 funds done. So the next thing I like to upgrade is going to be this over here. Max vessel size 20 meters, 21 meters. Max vessel weight 18. We could actually go see the ships that we have saved already. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it and choose 75k and upgrade it. So now we can go to 36 meters and max vessel weight of 140 tons. All right, so we have to go visit our area over here, see what our active ones are. Escape the atmosphere, set a speed record, orbit Kerbin, set an altitude record, set a distance record. And that's going to be it for today when we get to that next jump. So it's Valentina's turn again. Valentina needs a bigger ship to do this. We're going to leave Science Junior on here. This time we're going to do it separately. We're going to keep Science Junior and we're going to build this in a different manner because we want to... Uh, get the science out of that and hopefully we'll be in space long enough to do that. So we are going to go into the structural and put it stacked to coupler right underneath that. We're then going to put a uh, fuel tank right underneath that. And we are going to put science, well, we're going to put science junior and then a fuel tank. That's what I think I'm going to do. I'm going to go to science, put that there, put that there, and let's see, what do we have here? We do have boosters, good. All right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to put this engine right here. Put our stack to coupler on. Put the big engine on. We're going to limit the engine because this one has a lot more thrust to about 70%. We need to put some kind of communicatron on here, but we don't have any way to generate. Uh, to generate, uh, this is gimbaled, I don't think we need it. We're going to put two fuel tanks on, and we're going to put the one that generates power. See, this one generates power. This one does not generate power. And I don't know how to show you that, it's just something I'm used to over time. If you look where it says electric charge, six a second, oh, that's the swivel, seven a second. All right, so we do have the ability right there. So this rocket will probably get us somewhere. Um, it's going to get very top-heavy very quick. Hopefully we can get it into a uh, high enough uh, plane where everything will actually work for us. So we will talk about this one being girl power. And of course this is two. And we're missing one last thing, which is going to be... Making sure staging is right. We have the communicatron. And we want to put our other science gathering materials on here. We're going to put two. Because I have a feeling we're going to land somewhere else where we can get some information from. And that's Girl Power 2. Let's see how this works. I've never made one like this before. Now you cannot adjust the throttle on this particular vessel until we separate the bottom. Limiting it to 70% I hope is enough. But... And actually doing our gravity turn in something like this is going to be tough. So we're going to start it with a bit earlier. And this thing should be pushing us to a maximum velocity very quickly. You really want to get out of the uh, lower atmosphere as quickly as you can so you don't burn up as you go faster and faster. 
Let's see how high this thing lets us go. All right, so we're at almost 400. You're going to see some heating happening right now. We're going to let some of that speed bleed off. And we're very nose heavy here. This is a gimbaled... It's not letting us turn it at all, is it? Yes, it is. There we go. So the gimbaled, uh, the gimbaled engine lets us point in the direction we want to go. And something here that I'm going to look at now is I'm just going to look down here, bring up the nav ball by clicking this, and see how high that we're going to get this. We're looking for 70 kilometers. Let's see where we are inside the game. We're getting through the uh, upper atmosphere pretty big. And it looks like we'll probably do it this time because now we're meeting less air resistance in the upper atmosphere. And all we want to do is get that to 70. Ballistic suborbital trajectory. That's what we're looking for. 60. As long as we get to 70, we're good. And we may not make it. We may have lost it a little bit here. We'll see. We're only going to be above 70 for a little bit here. You'll notice that drag is pulling us down. All right, so we are going to shoot up to 70, and we are going to gather some well-needed science from up there. Science Junior is not coming back with us this time. And I don't think I gave myself enough time to do an EVA, collect the data, and come back. So we're going to have to send the data back, which is going to have some degradation in the data. So we're still going up. Get ready to do a crew report, Mr. Jebed, uh, Miss Valentina. She said 65, slowing down. You'll notice the electrical charge is dissipating because I have on, because I'm using the built-in uh, gyroscopes to turn the, you know, turn the ship. We got a crew report. We're going to keep it inside. We're going to go, we're going to EVA. We're going to get some science. I'm going to try to keep it. And we're going to observe the mystery goo. And we're going to keep it. Now, the science over here, what we can do is we can come over here. We could review stored data. Right now, the only stored data is his observations. Those are definitely coming back with us. Review stored data over here. We can send it back. And this is how much is going to go back. This is the loss that we're going to have right here. We're going to have a major loss in data when we transmit it. But let's transmit it. And it's going to tell us how much was done. And we didn't have enough electrical charge to do it. So bringing this with us did not actually work out to our benefit. And the reason why I'm getting rid of it is because there is no, uh, there isn't any kind of a uh, heat shield on that item. So at this point, we are just tumbling through the atmosphere with no way to control which way we point. So this is going to be dangerous. Very dangerous. And you'll notice that we're trying to keep this as flat and as into the atmosphere as we can. But as it meets the increased air resistance, it's going to have a uh, 
it's going to have a perpetual move towards flipping over and putting the nose first. We have no uh, no built-in uh, retro rockets on this like you would on a real ship, a real spacecraft. But we're really not going that fast at only 1100 meters a second. And that's going to slow down rather rapidly now. The heat shield is built into the space capsule, so you don't need to put one on it. You'll see that we slowed down pretty fast there. Not so bad, right? So as we start to descend and start going down in G's, this time we're going to let it get down to about 212 if we can. She's falling very rapidly. There we go. Just a very quick uh, high G maneuver there. We slowed it down enough, launched the parachute, and we have a successful third mission. I think that's all we're going to do today. We're just going to take it through those first three missions and talk a little bit about what we do from here. I do plan on doing a bunch more videos on this and uh, the rivalry between uh, Valentina and Jebediah will go on to see who can do more than the other and hopefully they stay alive. Now you'll notice that the uh, antenna is still sticking out in real life that never happened. So she's going to stay inside of her space capsule this time and we're going to recover her and we lost some valuable data in that one so we didn't get as much data as we really wanted next time I will talk about batteries, I'll talk about solar panels, I'll talk about engines that actually will be able to generate power which I was pointing out before we only got 33 signs from there that was kinda lame um, that leaves us with uh, 90 total though so let's see what we can do with that all right, we still have 396,000 now. She got no XP gain from that. We're going to do our unlocks. And our main unlocks are going to be here for survivability. You'll see there is a heat shield, landing struts, new parachutes, and the science bay. Stability is going to give us a couple of things that we really do not need right now. So we have 75. What I want is advanced rocketry because I want the Poodle or Terrier engine. I want the Thud liquid fuel engine and I want a bigger fuel tank that's going to help us out immensely. That leaves us with 30 which leaves us with nothing left that we can get. So I will take the stability at this point for 18 and it gives us the ability to make a much better rocket. So that's it for the first episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program 1.0. Hopefully we can do something like what I was doing in the original Kerbal um, videos that I did, which was taking you through the journey that Jebediah is on. But this time, he's got a rival, and who knows, where's it going to go with Jeb and Valentina? If you want to see my uh, best Kerbal Space Program video, it's the second video I ever uploaded. It's called Bartsby Kerbin. Bart B. Kerman flies to the moon, drives to the moon, sorry. And in that one, I actually created a rover and used it as a space capsule, launched it, sent it all the way to the moon, and landed it like a car on the moon, 30 kilometers from a uh, moon base I had set up, and then drove it from my landing spot to the base. So that was a fun video, and I hope you guys all take a look at it, and I'll link it here. Well, until next time, you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.